just laying on my stomach like I normally do for good lighting. Um, kind of hurts because it puts pressure up here. Um, here's like the scar from the surgery. So it doesn't really look that bad. Especially for just being a few days out. So anyways, um, so I had my surgery on Tuesday. Today is Sunday. Um, today, I would say today and yesterday are like the best I felt. Um, and it helped that yesterday, or no wait, it was Friday, Dr. Five called me and told me everything was benign. Um, so what I've been going through for the past week would be though, um, the night before the surgery, they were shutting down schools because it was icy and Texas doesn't really have like the required equipment to, um, deal with icy roads. Um, so it's kind of, if it happens here, it's like a big deal and the whole city shuts down. So they were shutting down the city the night before my, before my surgery. My surgery was at 7, which means we had to be there at 5. So in my head, I'm thinking, we're not going to make the surgery. And so I got three or four hours of rest, but I wasn't really worried about it because I was, I was hoping that we would not, um, you know, make it. So anyways, I, I saw the radar that night too, and it was like completely icy. And so I was like, well, of course we're not going to make it, like whatever. Um, but somehow we did. And so we made it, but we were super late. We're like an hour late. So they, you know, you only have the operating room for a certain amount of time. So they started to black. So, um, anyways, we get to the hospital. We're an hour late because the weather's bad. Um, and I like run in the, well, I talked to my anesthesiologist for a little bit. Um, cause I have a lot of questions. And then I go in the bathroom to put on this like heated, um, gown. They have like heated hospital gowns where they just like plug them in and they warm you up. Um, so I went in to put that on and I guess everybody rushed in the room when I was gone thinking I was ready for surgery and I wasn't even there. So when I make it there, they're like, we have to hurry. We have to rush. We only have the OR for so much time. And I'm like, uh oh, so they're, they're in, like rushing when I'm already nervous about the situation makes it even worse. The more they rushed, the more I started panicking and I, they gave me like a little bit of reset. It was like this much. And I was like, I'm having a panic attack. I was like, I can't do this surgery. Um, I was like holding my mom's hand and my stepdad's hand and I don't remember any of this but I got the story later from my stepdad um, and I was telling the doctor that I'm not ready for this and I was like lecturing with my fingers like I don't want any surprises I was like I don't want all my thyroid out um, I was like I you know I'm not sure if I'm ready for this and then apparently because I just wouldn't shut up they gave me like this much for a set which is actually a lot and it could like drink wise a horse and I was just out but my finger my stepdad said my finger kept going and I was like ah um, um I wake up out of anesthesia and I am like being belted to a chair, like that's all that I remember. I just remember looking down and seeing like a big white belt um, and um, just going back out of it. And then I heard like the oxygen, my oxygen levels were super low from all the anesthesia. So I remember hearing the machine just go beep, 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 and then I would wake up and then I would go back to sleep. Um, so the first few days were super rough with the anesthesia and I had a fever. Um, but I felt, I would say like today and like, so I guess Sunday and Saturday, I felt a lot better. Um, it also helped. So, and then on Friday, Dr. Fife called me and, um, so that he didn't want me to have to worry over the weekend for my pathology report. And he went to call me immediately on Friday when he got him, um, to tell me that it was benign. It was a, um, I think hyperplastic or hyperplasia cyst and it was five centimeters and six grams. Um, so I don't have cancer because cancer would have meant that we had to go back in the same hole or the same cut and take out the other part of my thyroid and I would have to live on Synthroid for the rest of my life. Um, so it was just really good news because I was really worried about that. Um, honestly, Dr. Fife is like an amazing doctor and, um, his demeanor probably got me through this whole thing. Like he is so calm and, um, just like no big deal, even about like the thing that could be a huge big deal. And I think that's like... And that's an important thing. And also, he's an amazing surgeon. Like, this is, like, hardly a bad scar for just being, like, six days out. Um, and he's not cocky. Like, there's some doctors who are super cocky, but they have no reason to be because they have no idea what they're talking about. But he's, like, he's smart, and he's won all these awards, and he's, um, his demeanor is amazing, and he's not cocky, and he's humble, and honestly, and he's a great surgeon. I mean, I think this is probably minimal scarring. Um, so I'm just, like very happy with him. And last part of this whole process is going to see my endocrinologist who will be my new best friend. Um, I'll have to see her all the time. So they remove the right side of the thyroid. So ideally the left side takes over, but it doesn't always happen. So we have to go get the levels tested and make sure the left side is taking over for the right side. Um, and that's pretty much it.